Billionaires Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos have completed their dream mission of heading to space. Bezos on the same day as the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. So how do people like this and people like you and I at home get this opportunity to do the same thing? Well, joining us now is Dr. Mae Jemison. She's the first black female astronaut and was the first black woman in space. It is an honor to speak with you today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here as well. Now, it's people like you and, you know, Mary Jackson that my daughters are looking up to. They got hooked on space from watching Hitting Figures, and now they just want to be just like you when they grow up. How important is it to just keep honoring people that have gone to space, people of color that have had the opportunity to continue this dream? So I don't think the issue is honoring people who have gone to space to continue to dream. I think it's about how do we make sure the opportunities are available? How do we make sure that every child has the ability to grow to their potential? So when we look at today the um, Jeff Bezos flight with Blue Origin and its success, there's an engineering piece. There's a piece that um, people are talking about democratizing space. But I don't really know how much is democratized if you if it requires as much money as it does to get a seat. There was a democratization that happens when your capabilities and your capacities allow you to go as well. I'm, I think it's really exciting because there are great engineering challenges that happen when we look at um, uh, Virgin Galactic, for example, there is a different, completely different way of getting into space. Blue Origin has done things, and even SpaceX has done an incredible job with building on what's happened and what taxpayers helped fund from the 1950s, 1960s on. What we have to do is to make sure that um, this resource, which is space exploration, this resource, which is the technology involved, is available to everyone on Earth to make Earth better, to make life better here on Earth. Well, you know, Jeff Bezos just gave Van Jones $100 million for nonprofit initiatives. Hopefully some of that would go towards programs to help further the dream. So talk to us about maybe parents that may be out there and they want to support their children with STEM and, and STEAM. Are there any things you can tell either the parents or the kids in order to continue going forward with their mission? So I'm going to be kind of, um, I'm going to be very, very straight. Children, uh, James Baldwin said, children seldom do what their parents tell them to do, <laughs> but they hardly ever fail to imitate them. That's yeah. paraphrasing it. So the way to do this is by us staying involved and understanding that, you know, space isn't a kiddie stuff. Children love it, right? But so do adults. But we have to make sure that we give, again, the opportunities. When people talk about STEM, space isn't just about STEM as well. So all of the contracts, what space is used for the policies, how it's applied, that happens whether you talk about uh, law, whether you talk about um, things like art telling the story, all of us are involved. So I would say is that we have to make sure if we're looking at science, that we have hands-on science education, that we make sure every school is excellent, right? It shouldn't be that you have to pick and choose the school your child goes to, especially in elementary school. Every child deserves an excellent mm -hmm. education. That's our responsibility as adults. An excellent education requires science literacy, as well as it requires reading literacy and numeracy and understanding about the social sciences and civics. So it's really about um, understanding that this is our future that we're creating. We create it through how we invest in our children and also how we invest in um, the use of technologies, the design, the research right now today. You know, I want to take you back a little bit because you went into space in 1992, almost 30 years ago. Are you still pinching yourself? Can you explain to us what that moment was like when you reached, you know, space and you're looking down at the Earth? So, no, I'm not still pinching myself. <laughs> okay, that would that's be, just that me. Would be sad, oh right? <laughs> but, um, you know, it continues to be a, a very profound adventure. So 
And it's not just the, the seven, the seven, eight days that I was up in space. It's even what you learn and how you carry that forward. And so for me, what I've been doing with it is trying to make sure that everybody understands they have the right and the opportunity to participate and also what it means to life here on Earth. So frequently, you know, we um, think about space as just what's going on up there. But I'm holding up a cell phone in my hand right now. We all have cell phones, smartphones. And and they have um, space devices on it, global positioning satellite systems. We mm. look at being able to look back at the Earth and do remote sensing, uh, work with agriculture, uh, land management. Even MRIs have technology-based in space exploration. So it's really about how we apply it back here on Earth. So I'm not pinching myself about having gone, even though I know the trip is, was really exciting. The view was incredible. The connection to the greater universe was incredible. But for me, it's how do we how do we use our experiences to make the world better? For me, mm. it started off with doing science literacy. Yeah. I have a whole, I've been working on now a project called a 100 Year Starship, which was seed funded by DARPA very modestly to ensure that we have the capabilities for human interstellar flight beyond our solar system to another star in 100 years not because we're trying to launch the space shuttle enterprise, but because we want all the knowledge, the commitment that happens when you try something extraordinarily difficult. We know how to do low Earth orbit, mm -hmm. um, which is what we're, what's happening today. And that was based on things on the 60s and it's had a tremendous impact on our world. But the challenges of going to another star are way beyond that. They have one that requires you to do environmental sciences, requires sustainability. And I love it how you keep other people there. I love how That's you keep it. broadening the conversation because so many people just think astronauts. But like you said, there are so many different layers to this conversation and different jobs that people can go into to continue achieving these advances in technology. Before you go, I have to ask you, you know, some of the tickets to go to outer space are ranging from two hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Having been and there more. already, yeah, and more, you know, Oliver, the kid that went today, 18 years old, he paid $28 million to go. However, <laughs> I don't have that. So for those that may have $250,000 to go to space, knowing what you know, would you go? Would you pay to go again? So if I had the money, I would have paid the first time. Remember, this isn't the first time people have paid to go into space. Mm -hmm. Elon Musk went up to the space station for $25 million with the Russians. So yes, if I hadn't gone, I would have paid for it. The question we have as a society is who gets to be the gatekeepers? Do mm -hmm. we, people have been talking about commercial space mm -hmm. and the private industry so much now. We've forgotten that there are people up on the International Space Station right now right, that we have built this, do we abdicate the responsibility for who uses space, who gets to determine um, what technologies are built, who gets access to them? Do we give that over privately or do we keep that as a resource? So yes, I would pay it to go up, but that's not the, the salient question. The question we have to ask as a society is who gets to be the gatekeeper? Mm, that's a scary and Conversation right there. We'll definitely have to keep working on the answer to that and trying to let's, somebody. Let's what? not say scary. Okay. Let's say a required conversation. Oh, definitely required. And hopefully they approach it in a tactful manner. How about that? We approach it. Okay, we I approach like that. it. You and me. I we like you. It. You keeping us on focus, on task, on point. I like that. We're glad to have you back on sometime.